we have excellent posters this year uh, and um, the scientific committee selected uh, two abstracts uh, the abstract by margarita saraco and the abstract by adrien boquillon um, it was difficult to select the posters but we decided the scientific committee decided to select this poster because of their uh, clinical relevance and uh, their scientific relevance. Because we had uh, th these two candidates, uh, Margarita Saraco and Adrien Bouquillon, at the same scores, we decided to uh, keep the two abstracts as the best posters. I will, uh, I will now give the word to uh, Mark, who will present uh, the abstract of Margarita Saraco, Mark. So the first poster was given by, uh, presented by Margarita Saraco, and it was a devote on uh, the uh, retreatment of patients who were wonderful liver transplantations and who were previously uh, failed on uh, DA regimens containing NSA, NS5A inhibitors. And so during the, the period of uh, the studies, uh, 490 patients underwent liver transplantations in their center, and among them, 49 patients were viremic patients at liver transplantation, and six of them were treatment experienced to NS5A inhibitors, and therefore they were treated after liver transplantation with stop Velvox as soon as the graft function was optimal with stable immunosuppression. And uh, five patients were genotype 3, one were for genotype 1, as expected, and uh, patient six received a graft from a very unique donor. It was genotype two, and so it changed from genotype three to genotype two after the liver transplant. And the median time from liver transplantations to DA therapy was 15 days. And all patients achieve uh, HIV RNA uh, and detectability within three, three weeks of therapy. And you get on the slide the, the, uh, the demographic uh, characteristic of those patients. And the key point is that all patients achieve SVR and uh, without any problem, we saw Velvox. And if you look, there was only one patient who interrupted saw Velvox at week eight for cholestatic hepatitis. And uh, the liver biopsy was consistent with drug-induced hepatitis. And um, when, we stopped, when the drug was stopped, uh, then the liver, uh, the liver functions uh, remain uh, under normal range. And the, in this patient, HIV RNA remained negative uh, uh, and it was negative and 14 days of therapy and remained negative uh, forever. And the uh, immunosuppression flavor remained stable. So in conclusions, uh, these uh, studies demonstrate that we can really retreat the patients who are NS5A failure prior to transplantations, after transplantations. And we, in this uh, situation, we can use soft Velvox uh, in all patients with a very high rate of response. And so that's it, and so that's why it was interesting. And now I leave the floor to Patrick to present the second poster. Thank you, Marc. Uh, I will present the poster uh, of Adrien Bouquillon from Belgium. Um, this is a, a nice study on the impact of liver fibrosis on the mortality. Um, this is an interesting study because this is a study uh, in a cohort of patients with a liver biopsy, proven NAFLD, uh, 228 patients were included. All other causes of uh, steatopathy were excluded. And these patients were followed for a, a long time, a relatively long time. And uh, this study compared those patients who had mild or moderate fibrosis to those with severe uh, fibrosis or cirrhosis. And um, the patient with F3, F4 were older, had a HBP and uh, diabetes more often. Uh, liver tests were not different. Bilirubin and ENA, no surprise, uh, were higher in the patient with F3, F4. But when we look at hepatic decompensation, Obviously, F3, F4 patients had more hepatic decompensation, but not zero in F0, F1 in the follow-up, during the follow-up. HCC was uh, relatively high. The incidence was relatively high 
um, obviously. And what is interesting, the mortality was the same in both groups, a little uh, higher in F3F4, but it was more related to cardiovascular complications. So, in fact, these results show that cardio cardiovascular related mortality uh, is uh, more important than liver related mortality. Um, on this slide, you see the factors associated with uh, liver events, liver related events. You can see that uh, only in multivariate analysis uh, without uh, glycolytic uh, hemoglobin. You can see that patients with F3, F4, only the fibrosis stage, in, indeed, uh, is associated with uh, liver-related events. This is not a surprise, this is, but uh, this is not correlated in multivariate analysis with uh, other liver tests. So, of course, histology is, uh, is crucial. And finally, overall mortality, um, the factors associated with the mortality, you can see that the liver tests give some uh, risk, are uh, associated with, with the risk and predict the risk. And uh, again, the fibrosis score, interestingly, is not associated significantly with the mortality. As we have seen uh, before, the cardiovascular mortality is indeed uh, stronger and uh, so the fibrosis store score is not uh, uh, significantly associated with the mortality. So finally, uh, we can conclude that the fibrosis stage is the only risk factor for associated with uh, uh, liver related events. That's uh, uh, clear. Follow up and uh, for HCC screening should be done. Uh, and interestingly, in this study, confirming other studies in NAFLD patients, cardiovascular events are the main cause of mortality, and the uh, fibrosis stage is not the factor uh, significantly associated with mortality. The cardiovascular um, uh, status of the patient is uh, more important. So it means that all patients in NAFLD should underwent cardiovascular screening and follow up. I think this study should be completed with a longer follow-up to see if uh, liver-related mortality is not increasing with the time uh, and uh, maybe more important than, we, than that we see in this study in terms of uh, cardiovascular complication. Thank you. So now I think uh, it's time to uh, go to the take-home messages of day one of the hepatitis day. Uh, Mark will uh, wrap up this, um, uh, this day, will give us a, a summary what we learned today, Mark.